During this pandemic, everyone should work together to break this chain of transmission. But how? As for businesses, they should always make sure that their operations comply with the SOPs. For example, employees and customers must maintain a social distance. You need to clean and disinfect all surfaces and objects. Remember these four steps. Wipe, spread disinfect, wait for 20 seconds, and then clean. Measures of government during COVID-19 The government provides Malaysia with free COVID-19 vaccine. High-risk groups are given priority for vaccination. Imposes penalty for COVID-19 SOP violations. For example, individuals that fail to wear a face mask for the first time are being penalty of 1,500. Individual responsibilities during COVID-19 Self-quarantine Stay at home if you are feeling unwell or have been in close contact with a COVID-19 patient. Everyone should get a COVID-19 vaccine. Getting the vaccination will prevent you from getting coronavirus. Let's fight the COVID-19 together. Assalamualaikum and good morning to yang berbahagia Prof. Dr. Dr. Haji Kasim, Haji Mat Mansur. 
Dean of the Faculty of Business Economics and Accountancy, to the Deputy Deans, fellow lecturers, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining and uh, welcome to the virtual welcoming and briefing session for postgraduate students intake semester two, session 2021-2022. So tentatively, we will start our session with the welcoming speech that will be delivered by Yang Berbahagia, Prof. Daikan, and then we will move to the group photo session. After that, we will then move to the briefing session for postgraduate students. So uh, without further ado, I welcome Yang Berbahagia, Prof. Daikan, for the keynote, sorry, for the welcoming speech and uh, Prof. Daikan, the session is yours. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and very good morning. Um, <clears throat> okay, can everybody listen to my voice? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, I would like the secretariat to show the Slides, please. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum again and good morning. Uh, welcome to our session this morning, which is the orientation uh, week to our post new postgraduate students. Uh, and selamat datang to Faculty of Business Economics and Accountancy. Um, okay, um, yang berusaha Dr. Arif, uh, the Deputy Dean of Postgraduate Students and Student Affairs, yang berusaha Dr. Beatrice Lim, the Deputy Dean of uh, academics and internalizations, uh, Dr. Uh, well, here. Dr. Sudin is here. I, I didn't see Dr. Sudin. Okay, uh, and all the directors and my fellow faculty members. And of course, to our beloved new students to this morning session. Uh, okay, before I proceed, I would like the secretariat to show up the slides of presentation. I would like to introduce the new student to, to our faculty, okay. Well, uh, okay, uh, thank you. Next uh, slide, please. Next slides, um, because this uh, briefing is very much on our faculty in general, and the details will be delivered by uh, either the DPT Dean or the uh, Coordinator of Postgraduate Students uh, Activities. Uh, this is the faculty and we like the student to understand our vision and mission. This is very much tuned to ASCSB vision and mission. Of course, as you can see from the slide, the Faculty of Business, Economics and Accountancy strives to be an uh, innovative world-class faculty we would like to be world-class and now in terms of qs ranking uh ums rank top 1000 okay in the world so very much one of the very competitive universities huh? worldwide not only in asia but worldwide so of course and the mission is we would like uh, the faculty strives to achieve uh, excellence in the dissemination of knowledge 
in the fields of business, economics, and accountancy towards the attainment of international recognition. As you can see that we would like to be uh, wholly recognized okay, by our um, partners and our, you know, uh, other uh, academic institution around. Okay, next. Um, okay, for your information, <clears throat> uh, this is our undergraduate programs offered by the faculty. Um, we have 10 programs at the undergraduate level. Okay, uh, namely uh, planning and development economics. Uh, secondly, financial economics. And th thirdly, is human resource economics. This is, uh, these programs are under uh, economic cluster. Okay. And then the uh, under economics area, okay. And the second one, uh, the next one is entrepreneurship. Uh, undergraduate level, entrepreneurship, financial management, and banking, hotel management, international business, marketing, tourism management. So we have six programs under business components. Okay, six programs under business components, and another one is accounting. So accounting is uh, as a professional undergraduate course. Uh, it's a four-year program. The only programs, okay, uh, four-year offered at the faculty. The rest are all three years uh, programs at undergraduates. Okay, next. Um, now, a series of various of uh, fields under postgraduates namely master of accounting business economics by research any any topics related to business accounting and economics you can do either at the master's or phd level okay and uh, we also offer master of economics uh, by mixed mode uh, what do we mean by mixed mode mixed modes is half of the Half of the course requirement is coursework, and the rest of the credit, uh, you know, is uh, devoted to dissertation. And we also offer Master of Human Resource Management (MHCM) by coursework. Okay, if you're a full-time student, you can uh, finish the studies in within one year. Uh, and I most of I believe uh, some of you are also taking masters of business administration, uh, coursework either part time or full time. And we also, as I mentioned earlier, we also offer doctor doctor of philosophy in all disciplines, either economics, business, or accounting. Uh, this this doctor of philosophy is of course by research. Uh, minimum uh, period to finish the studies is three years. Uh, okay, the, mini, this is the minimum. But most of the students can manage to finish their research by in, in four or five or six years time. Okay, we we'll proceed again to the next slide. Now, the faculty comprises of 85 academic uh faculty members okay uh, 85 uh, total okay uh having 61.2 percent of the faculty members with phd and we are supported by 22 administrative staff headed by one of the uh, senior registrar okay uh puan jumianti okay um these are some of the statistics, as you can see uh, that our current undergraduate students at the time is 2,842. 
And we have about 214 postgraduate students. But the number is keep on increasing. There's no uh, the, 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 the fixed number, you know, because the numbers are keep on uh, increasing or change over time. Uh, we have three professors at the faculty, uh, uh, 10 associate professors, and we have 40 senior lecturers. When I say senior lecturer is grade 51 or 52. Okay. And we have uh, 36 lecturer. Okay. Uh, and tutor or postgraduate fellow, we have five. And we also have research fellow, one attached to one of the center under the faculty okay next next slide okay uh, okay um i'm the dean and supported by deputy deans dr arif kamisan uh looking after postgraduate student and student affairs if you have problem with your studies these are the right gentlemen that you have to uh, get in touch uh, he is originally from Johor Bahru, and uh, Dr. Beatrice Lim Fuyi is the Deputy Dean of Academic and in International, okay, in charge of academic matters, and a newly appointed Deputy Dean looking after research and innovation is Dr. Sudin Lada, okay, he is a... Uh, uh, you know, specialize in marketing. Okay, next. Uh, these are our staff, administrative staff, headed by uh, Puan Jumiati Pajakai, the deputy, senior deputy registrar, supported by the uh, senior assistant registrar, Puan Noraizi, Nor Azian Share. Okay, next. Um, the only three professors at the faculty, of course, our deputy vice chancellor, academic and international, Professor Dr. Rashid Mail. Uh, his area is in accounting. Okay, so for those who are look, uh, studying and uh, what looking at uh, research, doing research on accounting, you can also refer to him. But this is a very busy person in the campus. Uh, me and Doc, Professor Dr. Jennifer also uh, in, the, in the faculty used to be the very vibrant uh, professor looking after one of the research center um, and the tourism. Okay. Next. These are our associate professor. Uh, as you can see, as a professor, Dr. Raman Nordin is also a very important person in the university, holding a position as a deputy vice chancellor, student affairs and alumni. Uh, his area is also in management accounting. Okay, the next one is associate professor, Dr. Zaitun. Uh, Specialization is uh, financial management and banking. Um, also, another as a professor is Dr. Muhammad Raimi Abdul Karim, and also very important person in the in the university. He's in the now assistant vice chancellor, uh, looking after the strategic matters, and also he's the also he's holding two position, administrative position as a director center for strategic management and corporate communication. His uh, specialization is in Islamic finance and investment. And our, uh, as a professor, is uh, Dr. Stephen L. Sondo. Uh, his area of specialization is marketing, consumer behavior. Next. 
Associate Professor Dr. Caroline, okay, uh, from Kuala Lumpur. He, her specialization is in financial and monetary economics. Okay, uh, very senior lecturer and the faculty. Uh, also, another one is Associate Professor Dr. Janice Nga Lei Hui, um, is from IPO. Uh, her specialization is political economics, youth and society, doing lots of research related to youths in Malaysia. The next is as a Professor Dr. Wang Kuhasanal Bahar Pinggiran Bagul. Okay, he's also the head of the program Tourism Management. His area of specialization is tourism management ecotourism studies. And another one is as a professor, Dr. Wong Hok Seng. Uh, he's also head of the program, uh, Financial Economics. His specialization is Financial and Economics Monetary. So we have very uh, diverse, you know, background in the faculty. Okay, next. Next, uh, as a professor, Dr. Ramraini Binti Ali Hassan. He's also the head of the, she's also the head of the program, Entrepreneurship. Her specialization is Entrepreneurship Business Management. And as a professor, Dr. Sarma Muhammad Imran Alalas. Uh, he's just uh, appointed as the, the, the pioneer, okay, director of Center for Economic Development and Policy, our newly established uh, center of uh, research center related to economics and policy. Her uh, specialization is international development economics, financial economics, and econometric. Next, um, these are our senior lecturer. Okay, as you can see, very also uh, experienced uh, lecturer in the faculty, Dr. Junaina JD. Okay, from Putatan. Her uh, specialization is financial account accounting, financial reporting, environmental accounting, management accounting. Okay. Uh, next is Dr. Lim Seng Ten Sang. Okay, he's also the director, Center for External Education in short plumes. His specialization is financial literacy, insurance, risk management. And of course, uh, our one of our deputy dean, Dr. Arif. Uh, Alayas Kamisan Pusiran, he's the Deputy Dean, uh, Student Affairs and Postgraduate. His specialization is in Rural Tourism. Oh, well, tourism is very badly affected by COVID. So this is the time that we have to re revive this sector, okay? Uh, do research on this. Uh, and then Dr. Azizi. Alayas Azazi Abdul Adis. He's the, he's the Deputy Dean, okay, Student Affair, uh, Welfare Center for Postgraduate Studies. His specialization is brand management, okay, of course, in marketing. Uh, this gentleman can speak fluently in Korea. Okay, next. Um, Dr. Mazalan Mifli. Okay, um, used to hold many various posi administrative positions. Uh, also, former deputy dean the past few years and also head of the program. And his specialization is menu analysis and development, very much related to hotel okay, programs. Next is Dr. Mori Kogit, okay, another economist. Okay, uh, well cited papers. Uh, his area is applied 
econometrics, financial and monetary economics, international economics. Okay, uh, next is Dr. Ang Hong Long. He just appointed this uh, Dr. Ang less than a year ago. Okay, his specialization is entrepreneurship management. Next is Dr. Rosili Bin Asid. Um, used to be our deputy dean before Dr. Sudin took over. Now he's the deputy director center for innovation management and commercialization. His area is applied econometrics, international economics, commercialization, intellectual property. So he should, he's the right person to sit in that uh, position currently. Next, um, our senior lecturer is Dr. Beatrice. Uh, Dr. Beatrice Lim, eh? Why? Uh, Dr. First, with Dr. Belvinda. Dr. Belvinda Cochle from Likas. Huh? Uh, she is uh, now uh, Director Borneo Tourism Research Centre. She just took over from Professor Dr. Jennifer uh, a month ago. Uh, Area of specialization is tourist behavior, uh, leisure studies, organizational studies, so very much related to tourism. So now he's doing, she's doing lots of research how to revive the, the sectors which are badly affected by COVID. Next is Dr. Beatrice Lim Puyi, our Deputy Dean, Academic and International. Uh, her area of special specialization is labor economics, gender studies, economics of education. Next is Dr. Kok Sukching alias Emily. Her area of specialization, specialization is stock market, efficient market hypothesis, uh, financial and monetary economics, very much on economics. So. Next one is another economist from UMS, uh, from the faculty, Dr. Siti Hajar Samsu. Uh, she's from Labuan, originally. Now he's the, she's the head of the program, Planning and Development Economics. Uh, her specialization is Development Economics, Macroeconomics Issues, International Trade and Investment. Okay, uh, next is, uh, is Dr. Noor Fazlinda, also very vibrant young lady from from uh, Pera, yeah. Uh, used to be our DPT dean few years ago. Her specialization is family business entrepreneurship. So for those who are doing entrepreneurship, I think you can get advice from her. Next is Dr. Siti Nor Baya Ahmad. Okay, uh, she just joined the faculty about three or four, three, four years ago. Uh, very, uh, you know, senior lecturer. Uh, been in the, in the as academician for many years. Her uh, area is service marketing, consumer behavior, Branding, marketing, community, very much related to uh, pemasaran, marketing. Next, uh, this young lady from Kuching, uh, Dr. Pang Ing Grace, alias Grace. Okay, I think she can speak Japanese as well. Her uh, area is promotion, brand management, consumer behavior, service marketing, retailing, related very much to marketing. Our next senior lecturer, Dr. Rafik Idris, uh, well-known columnist. She, uh, he used to write lots of articles related to sub-economics, okay, published in local newspaper and, and international. His area of specialization is international trade, health economics, 
globalization uh, globalization islamic economics international finance so also very uh, active in doing research related to, to Saba economics now he's adding the uh, impact of economic impact to Saba with the shift uh, shifting of the new capital city from Jakarta to Nusantara Kalimantan okay next um, our senior lecturer is Dr. Toto Pesung Alaya Sharon uh, this young lady uh, we groom her from bachelor degree until masters until phd all uh, homegrown okay at the faculty now serving the faculty again uh, one of the very nice uh, personality student like her uh, her area is human resource management management human resource information system hris human capital management okay but don't play play around now nah, with dr sharon ada spy di sana itu the faculty okay next is dr tini maizura mokhtar okay a very vibrant young lady also active very active in doing research with community engagement her specialization is tourism management tourism marketing social culture all related to tourism our last but not least uh, senior lecturer is dr sulaiman tahajudin a guy from Samporna uh, used to be also the head of the program of, of uh, accounting. Pernah jadi ketua pengarah pusat perakaunan also. Uh, he's the, his area is in accounting for NGO, uh, public sector accounting. So very much on accounting. So these are some of our some of our senior lecturers. Actually, we have some more will be promoted very soon to be a senior lecturer. Okay. Oh, some more, Doctor Sida Idris. Okay, uh, our another senior lecturer at the faculty. Also, our alumni at undergraduate level. Uh, now he sees the deputy director center of quality assurance at the university level uh, she's a uh, uh, expert in international operation management international logistic management so very much on related to international business so always get advice to dr sida idris originally from tawaw Okay, this young lady is Dr. Te Kaizin. Okay, Dr. K, uh, Dr. Te also our alumni before and under, the undergraduate. Now come back uh, to you know impart his knowledge to in in the area of tourism management. Okay. Uh, next is Dr. Nelson Lajuni. Uh, he's the head of program banking and financial management. But Dr. Nelson is from Panampang. His area of specialization is corporate finance banking, financial management, financial literacy. Oh, very much related to banking and finance. Huh? Um, this uh, next is Puan Sh uh, Shahrija Chio Shari. Uh, she is a law by profession, okay? Um, her area is commercial law, labor law, occupational safety and health. So 
very much related to law. Upon uh, Sharija, we very well versed in law. Next, uh, Puan Rosini Binti Arifin. Uh, Puan Rosini is she's in in tourism, I believe. Yeah, tourism. Next is Encik Rosli Awang Muhyiddin. Okay, Encik Rosli originally from Sipitang but moved to Tuaran. Uh, his area is finance management, capital market, banking. So very much on finance and banking. Eh? Our, one of our senior lecturer in the faculty. Next is Muhammad Safri Simon, another economist. Uh, he is in charge of uh, in charge of thesis, thesis writing coordinator for undergraduate student. So his area of specialization is in economic development and growth, macroeconomics. Next, in Chi Masali bin Haji Ayub. Now he is the head of entrepreneurship research and development unit. His area of specialization is entrepreneurial studies. Huh? Very much on keusahawanan, entrepreneur, small medium enterprise, social enterprise, current issues on entrepreneurship, small medium enterprise development. Okay, next. Uh, Oh, we have another more. Dr. James Eng, alias James Allen. Another economist, okay? Very fluently speak Japanese. Okay? His area of specialization is agricultural economics, political economics, applied econometrics. So it used to be our... Uh, Pegawai Diplomatic, you know, PTD. Pegawai Tadbir than diplomatic, but switch his profession to become an academician. Okay, Dr. James. And then next is Inchi Abdul Wahid Muhammad Kasim. Yeah, Inchi Wahid is from Keningau. Huh? Uh, his area of specialization is financial accounting. Uh, very much on accounting. Next one is Mr. Charlie Albert Laswin. Okay, uh, his area of specialization is industrial marketing, brand management, very much on marketing. Next one is Haslinda Hassan. Oh, we proud of having one Haslinda because she just awarded the gold medal. Okay, it is one category of teaching online. Okay, the methodology of teaching online. So. Her uh, area of specialization is halal product marketing, consumer behavior, service marketing, promotion, very much on marketing also. Next, uh, Dr. Jaratin Lili, uh, he is the head of the program, international business, okay? Now, his area of specialization is international business, exchange rate, international financial market, so very much on international business. So for those of you who like to do research on this area, can always talk to Dr. Jaratin. Very nice personality. Dr. Jakaria Bindasan, okay, another very uh, vibrant, okay, gentleman from Tuaran. He's the director Center for Sustainable Society Engagement, okay. Community engagement, libat sama community, they call it. His area of specialization is human resource management, career development. So very much on human resource. Huh? Uh, next is Dr. Oscar Dawson. Okay, this young gentleman is from Penampang. Huh? Very sing single and available. His area of specialization is... Management, contemporary HRM issues, yeah, very much on human resource. And then another one is 
Mr. Jainurin Justin Abdul Aziz. Okay, he's the Acting Director Center of Accounting. His area of specialization is environmental account accounting, taxation, management accounting. Okay, uh, next one. As I told you, we have the biggest number of faculty members in the university, you know. Our faculty is the biggest number of staff, uh, faculty staff. So this is why we have plenty of uh, introduced to you one by one. Otherwise, they will get mad with me. I have to introduce them. Uh, Dr. Baha Brahim Chikima, the tallest guy in the university. Yeah? The tallest guy in the university. So I, I don't want to take picture with him is if I take picture with him I somebody will say I'm retarded person so uh, his area of specialization is marketing open marketing consumer beha uh, behaviors next one is Dr. Debra Tora Anak Nipo very young lady from uh, Kuching is her area is uh, uh, what uh, economics, economics, panel data, econometrics, ICT. Okay, from UITM. Uh, he she is now currently in charge of okay quality assurance unit. Okay, very detailed person, but very cooperative also young lady uh, okay next is dr chiong dia kui Ki. from ipo okay this young lady is also another economist specializing in human resource economics gender human development now this is very important person that you must uh, know her, Dr. Izianti Awang Razali. Uh, his home, her hometown is Kampung Likas, very close to the campus. Okay, Dr. Izianti, her specialization is peer to peer accommodation, uh, peer to peer accommodation, hospitality, consumer behavior, hospitality management, very much on. Hotel industry. Okay. Next, uh, next slide. Okay. Puan Ida Safinas Muhammad Kamal. Okay. Puan Ida also a lawyer by profession. Okay. Just like Puan Sharija just now. So Puan Ida is uh, specialized in commercial law international law can get advice from her related to any any law matters another one young lady from uh ipo okay dr bamini balakrishnan her area of specialization in is marketing branding consumer behavior uh, green marketing. He, she used to be the head of the program of marketing. Okay, very vi vibrant young lady, doing lots of presentation uh, in marketing. Okay. Uh, next is the our MC this morning, Doctor Saizal Pinjaman. This young gentleman is from. Kota Belud. He's the postgraduate coordinator. So those for those who are taking coursework, MBA, MHCM, or Masters Economics, yeah. Okay? Uh, Dr. Saizel is the right person you can communicate with. His area of specialization financial economics. Okay, next one is one Dr. Salma Topimin. Yeah. Dr. Salma 
uh, from originally from Johor. Okay? Area of specialization is entrepreneurship. Used to be the director uh, pusat penyelidikan keusahawanan, pembangunan keusahawanan. Okay, next. Uh, our senior lecturer is Dr. Andy Tamsang Andy Kili. Okay, this young lady from Lahad Datu. Her area of specialization is human resource management. Uh, PhD from New Zealand. Uh, she told me that how beautiful New Zealand is. If you sit down looking after the sunrise, you will you will not move until the sunset because the the scenery is beautiful. You don't feel the time fast, you know, uh, run so fast because the, the the scenery enjoy the scenery in New Zealand. And then next one is Dr. Juliana Langat, yeah. Another young lady from Cebu, Sarawak. But we'll getting married very soon. I congratulate to Dr. Juliana. Uh, her area of specialization is sustainability management, hospitality management. He's the head of the program, okay, uh, in uh, hotel management. Now is our deputy dean, Dr. Sudin Lada, okay. He's, he's in charge of research and innovation uh, from Tawau. His area of specialization is marketing management. So he wrote a lot of paper published in High Impact Journal, one of the highest cited papers, okay, uh, in the in the faculty, Dr. Sudin. Now is Dr. Alicia Chiu Z Cheng. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, our first class honor student at undergraduate level. I remember that when she just graduated with her first class honors, she took up, uh, I took a picture with her uh, during the convocation ceremony. Um, her area of specialization is international business, small medium enterprise uh, from Scotland, uh, PhD from Scotland. Next, um, our senior lecturer is Dr. Sharifa Rahma Amirul. Uh, Dr. Sharifa is from Sandakan, if I'm mistaken. He's now, she's now the director, DPT director, Center for Co curriculum and student development. Uh, area of specialization is human capital management, leadership, government policy. Oh, very much. Uh, I think we have to attach this sort of Dr. Sarifa to the Center of Economic Research and Policy because he, he's an expert in government policy. Uh, Dr. Sharma, take note on that. Next one is Dr. Sharifa Hanum Ali. Okay, also our alumni did her PhD long time ago at the faculty, her area of specialization management, HRM. Next is Dr. Junaida Zeno. Uh, currently, she's the practicum coordinator, those students undergraduate who are doing research, uh, industrial training. So uh, she's the coordinator. So Dr. Junaina, uh, by profession, is a law, she's a lawyer. Law, she read law okay, at, at PhD level. Very seldom people, a lawyer doing, having PhD. So her area is commercial law, contract law, commercial law. So I normally refer to her all the time related to law. Okay, and you can message her even in the middle of the night. She will not hesitate to reply your message. Okay, uh, Dr. Rosaidi Mohadi. Very 
uh, vibrant young gentleman here from Penang. Uh, specialized in public sector accounting, very much in accounting. Next. Uh, okay. These are the Faculty of Business, Economic Accountancy, Postgraduate Section. These are the persons in charge of this section. Huh? Uh, I just like to introduce you to Elizabeth Martin. Okay. Yeah, so get in touch with Elizabeth, one Elizabeth. And it, okay, next. Next one. Oh, headed by Dr. Arif. Kenapa lambat gambar Dr. Arif tu? Keluar tadi. Yeah, so headed by Dr. Arif. Okay, these are the four persons uh, looking after first graduate methods. Huh? issues or anything related to postgraduate okay either research or coursework next okay i think that's about it so with that I, i've been taking much of your time because of the introduction of long list of our faculty members as i mentioned to you we have i Exactly 100 faculty members in the faculty, the biggest number of lecturers at the at UMS, and we have also the biggest number of students in the, in the university. Okay, uh, 3,000 more than 3,000 students. Okay, with that, I uh, over to to Dr. Saizal. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much. Yang berbahagia Prof. Dato' Dekan for the welcoming speech and for introducing the members of the faculty. So before we move to the briefing session for both research and coursework student, I would like to invite all attendees to switch on your microphone for group photo session. Okay, we wait first for the rest to switch on their, their camera. Okay. Okay, uh, Puan Ellie, can you uh, help me to, yeah. to, to take a photo? Okay, one, two, smile. Smile. Okay, freestyle. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for switching your camera. Okay, so uh, we move to the next session, which is the briefing for research and coursework student. And for research student, you may stay in this session because the briefing session will be conducted here. While for the coursework student, uh, uh, I ask you or I, yeah, uh, I will share you the, what we call as link to the second, to another uh, session specifically for the coursework student, yeah? So for coursework student, uh, I invite you to click on the link that I have uh, included in the meeting chat. So you can click on the link to move to the uh, coursework briefing session. Thank you. So I pass over this uh, session to uh, maybe Dr. Izianti because I am going to to the next session. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Saizal. Maybe the students need to take a break for a while. Maybe one one or two minutes for coffee break, perhaps. Okay, we'll just um. Wait uh, for a while. Is it okay, Dr. Arif? Or you want to start the session? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yeah, because, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, let's start, yeah. Can you hear me, Dr. Arif? Yes, very loud and clear. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, 
today. My name is Dr. Izianti Awang Razli. I am the postgraduate uh, coordinator for uh, postgraduate studies by research in uh, Faculty of Business, Economics and Accountancy. Yeah? Um, first of all, welcome to University of Malaysia Sabah. Uh, and I would also love to congratulate each and every one of you for um, choosing yeah, to pursue your um, postgraduate degrees, whether it's masters or it is um, a PhD. Yeah, it's a, another level of your academic um, qualification. I do believe. Yeah, um, let us welcome this journey um, with new hopes, yeah, visions, um, new things, and with the hopes of to learn new things, uh, experience you never knew before, and. This journey will be a well, I don't know, it's going to be a roller coaster ride, perhaps, but I do believe your uh, journey we will assist you in any way. Yeah, before that, uh, I would like to, I think it has been um, introduced just now, but I would like to introduce you again to this um, uh, section, the postgraduate research, uh, head by Dr. Arif. Okay, maybe we can um, listen from Dr. Arif. Over to you, Dr. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ijanti. All right. Uh, so, on behalf of the faculty, all right, on the section also, I would like to congratulate all of you. All right, the new student uh, coming to this uh, this intake, and hopefully everyone have will have a pleasant journey. All right, throughout your study. All right. So, if you have any problem of uh, anything regarding your your, your study, please come and see me uh, and Dr. Izanti as well and Dr. 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 Saizal. And we are here, I'm very lucky to have uh, Madam Elizabeth also uh, as a Urustia and also as a staff of this uh, section. All right. I think that's all uh, from me, uh, Dr. Izanti. Back to you. All right. Thank Over you. To you. Thank you, Dr. Arif. Yeah, that is our Deputy Dean. And uh, again, this is uh, myself, Dr. Izenti. I am a lecturer, senior lecturer, have been with the, uh, with the UMS for almost uh, 18 years. Uh, my specialization is in hotel management, accommodation management. And we do also have uh, assistants to help us, Madam Elizabeth Martin, who is the um, admin assistant for this section. Yeah? Okay, um, how do you want to reach us? Okay, we are here. You can contact us via uh, email. You can also call us. We have Facebook for the students, for the postgraduate students of FBEA. And we also have a close group telegram, telegram close group. You will be aided, added by, uh, doc, uh, by Madam Elizabeth later after the session. Yeah. So um, any um, communication or emails or any promotion, we will post it in Telegram and also in your student's email. So it is advisable for you to actually um, uh, update your emails to your student email so you will not miss any important information. Yeah. Okay, uh, as being mentioned just now, uh, in postgraduate by research, okay, there are about 22 programs, which is a Masters of Economics, there are three fields. Masters of Business, you have seven fields. Uh, you also, we also have Masters of Accounting and we have 11 fields in Doctor of Philosophy. Yeah, so it's a huge program and each and every one of this program is, um, uh, we have our um, special uh, specialization, uh, we have our specialists in these expert areas, yeah? Okay, um, I do believe by this time around, you already have your supervisors, yeah? If you look at your uh, offer letter, uh, you will be assigned, I think you have been assigned with supervisors. So some of you have a single supervision, a single supervisor, and some of you have two, two supervisors, which we call it core supervisors or even more, okay? So um, I do believe also this supervisor that have been assigned for you has um, vast experience and they were chosen based on their expertise to guide you, yeah? To guide you in your uh, postgraduate uh, journey, yeah? So students may apply to change the supervisor in the future, okay? And also the supervisor may withdraw from the supervision um, if there's uh, any um, 
uh, different uh, experts or things like that you need to add okay so uh, so this is process of determining a supervisor you must be wondering how did um, this how did the assignment of the supervisor or how do you how did you assign by the supervisor okay this is a process and we take this into serious consideration yeah okay so for your information uh, some of you are the phd and some of you are doing masters by research so for full time the minimum for phd is four semesters which is two years and the maximums it adds at eight semesters while for part time there are six semesters and 12 semesters for maximum and uh, masters is two semesters and six semesters and part-time is four semesters and eight semesters i do believe also some of you are registering based on um, part-time mode and some of you are doing it full-time but for international students it has to be full-time mode yeah so um don't worry as well just in case in the middle of your uh, studies you need to change your registration because perhaps you have some problems you know don't worry student may apply to change the mode of reg registration from full-time to part-time or vice versa okay but it only can be done once throughout the stipulated period of study okay and the approval is subject to the remaining maximum period of candidature um, again uh, the international students are not allowed to change the mode of uh, registration and you have to remain as a part-time a full-time student until the end of your um, studies yeah. okay 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 as you know this uh, postgraduate um, studies you need to have um, before you go for your uh, thesis submission you need to go for your uh, proposal defense where um, this is the time where you need to defend your ideas your research before you can proceed with the collecting collection of data okay so for master's degrees for master's degree it would be advisable uh, full-time to have um, be done in the first or second semester and for the second semester uh, for phd is for the uh, the second semester okay but this again um, depends on your uh, supervisors as well and for part-time student it is advisable for you to do it during your second semester and for your phd is your third semester okay what happened if you did, uh, do not manage to fulfill this um, we will uh, have a session with you and to, we will discuss on what is your progress from time to time so we know um, we try to help you to assist you on how you can achieve your milestone yeah okay um important information you 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 need to know your right as your as a student okay you need to complete online student progress report on your week 14 i will discuss this more later um you need to students need to be responsible to register every semester pay your fees okay <clears throat> Because um, any student with outstanding fees shall have their registration suspended in the following semester. So it is um, advisable for you to complete uh, to pay all your fees before you can do your registration. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think most uh, most of you uh, can assess once you registered in the core in, in in the semester, you will be able to assess your uh, SMP, which is the online system for your uh, for students' information. So there is a finance, okay, where you can check your semester fees and ledger. You can see a course where you can register the cost, uh, the cost that you need to uh, register. So it is from week one to week four. Oh, by the way, this session is for uh, postgraduate by research, yeah, not for coursework. If you want, uh, yes, for by research i'm afraid that some of you might get um, confused with by by coursework yeah and by the end of the semester on week 14 you need to um uh, fill in the progress report where you can find the uh, form here lah, online as well so these are the things you have to keep up with the um, uh, we will remind you don't worry because uh, all of us uh, uh, i know that all of you are busy as well so we will remind you from time to time don't forget to check in uh, to pay your fees don't forget because you might get overlooked yeah so before that i think most of you before uh before you proceed with um, registration and choosing university you have already thought what is actually a postgraduate studies and i know that 
I believe that every one of you know what is it all about, okay? You might think that it's only um, work, social, and sleep, but uh, unfortunately, it's not that case. You have a lot of things to do. You have to do reading, writing, analysis. And some of you might be teaching. Some of you are doing part-time, and some of you are doing full-time as well. Yeah, so these are the reality of <laughs> postgraduate uh, students. Yeah, some of you even busy, too busy to tell people how busy you are. Okay, but um, I think you have to embrace the journey. Yeah, make it an experience one. Um, uh, make it an enjoy. Enjoy. Uh, enjoy is um, overstated, perhaps can, but it can be. Yeah. So um. <clears throat> what is you um what what is the okay some of you might be asking me what is your responsibility as a graduate student okay what how how to start or what to do okay once you register what what is my role doctor can i call my supervisor directly can i um uh, can i start with um proposal defense directly okay these are the things uh these are the roles of the student you must have choose with the help uh, you must choose your research topic okay uh, work systematically within the agreed deadlines. These are the role of your supervisor and the students. Okay, it's not the supervisor who try to find the students, but you as a student also need to keep in touch with your supervisor. Okay, give a serious uh, advice and uh, to realize that supervisors have duties and commitment, other commitment too. So um, virtually, I know it is um, challenging to meet because we cannot do it of uh, uh, face to face, but it is possible um, with emails and um, communication. Okay, do not um, neglect your supervisor or and um, uh, only meet your supervisor at the end of the semester. No, you have to meet your supervisor in the early semester to discuss on your introduction, to discuss on your uh, studies. Yeah. And for supervisors and graduate students as well. Okay. Um, I do, we do believe that you need to communicate regularly, okay, discuss your rules and responsibility. You have your own milestone and you need to um, achieve that, okay, and follow that. Be informed on university policies, dates, okay. Um, this is based on my experience, talking based on my experience. Some students overlook the dates, important dates, so they have like problems on registration, things like that. Be aware of the use and service and resources available through the um, through this um, uh, university. Yeah. Okay. Um, another important thing that I would like to share is on your progress monitoring. So this is the form where um, every time every time you meet your supervisor, it is advisable for you to have a book. Yeah. To jot down uh, what is your um, discussion and they also have this um, what they call this a form where 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 you can get from the postgraduate uh, center website or you can also get it from us the section where you can actually um, jot down on your progress okay and uh, your plan for that semester so you know where are you heading to this is very very important because time passes very fast while you are having fun or not having fun it, it the time still passed so it's advisable for you to have to actually um plan yeah plan your journey okay um at the same time um while you are busy with your supervisor do not forget that you also need to develop your skills okay make full use of a candidature by i think you can join various activities being um and taking part in academic discourse of uh, organized by the section or the uh, what is it by the section uh, FBEA section or by uh, the center. Okay, we have a lot of um, activities, yeah, weekly, monthly, such as colloquium. We have talk series, we have seminars, workshop, and it does not only apply for UMS, but you can also go for outside seminars as well. But for 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 FBEA for our faculty, we organized colloquium which is compulsory for everyone for every postgraduate student to come and join okay this will be um informed later okay this is the okay uh, this is on 2018 yeah mind you there was there were no mass no mass this time around it was uh yeah i think 2018 19 yeah 
And last year we did it uh, virtually. Yeah. So we got about uh, about 240 participants. Yeah. All the students came, the supervisor came as well, give their own thoughts and um, suggestions on this. It's such a great experience for the students. Um, in terms of seminars and workshop, we do provide and we organize a few. Okay. Um, we will uh, post it in Telegram and email, so you can follow, uh, you can uh, join the seminar for free. Okay, we have a lot, a lot uh, of um, topics. Yeah, um, for example, here you have research proposal, conducting a pilot studies, preparing for viva voce. Yeah, these are the things. Okay, I think this is uh, one of the important things that for first semester students needs to pay attention to whereby you need to is compulsory for the new postgraduate student to take research methodology methodology course yeah which is mp12303 um if you open your uh, registration you can see that there's two courses there which is a phd and also a research methodology course mp12303 meaning that you have to register this course yeah so this course is um 14 weeks okay 14 weeks um lecture no 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 seven weeks lecture but it takes about 14 weeks of your duration which is one semester so the week one and two will be handled by the cps yeah with the center postgraduate center and week three to 14 will be handled by the faculty okay um there is no grade for this um, subject, but you need to pass this before you go for your uh, proposal defense. Yeah. So in this course, we, uh, we I will explain later more, but student needs to present their research proposal as the final assessment of research methodology course for, for that particular semester. So for this semester, the, the session will start with the center. We will inform you later, but these are the speakers for this semester course. Lah. Okay, for semester two, semester two, session 2021 and 2022. Okay, um, yes, we do also have facilities at um, FBEA UMS. For full-time student, you, um, we do have research postgraduate room okay, at uh, the center. And also for uh, you can also use postgraduate lounge and discussion room. Okay, we also have postgraduate resource center in 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 um in the uh, cent, uh, postgraduate center and also in the faculty. We have uh, a location for seminar and conference. We provide you with academic uh, discourse seminars. Um, we you can also join the postgraduate student society to widen your networking know each other i know it's a it's a uh, it's kind of difficult to do it during the pandemic or um, during this time because you cannot do it um, face to face but it is you can um, it is possible to be done and we can assist you on this matter yeah and you can also join the alumni once you complete that okay uh, for full-time students, uh, we have a st shared study area, okay, and uh, for full-time students also, you may apply for uh, field work, funding for field work, presenting papers and other matters as deemed fit by the dean, but uh, yes, so all of these applications, you may apply, mm, yeah, you may apply um, the forms you can get it from us if and you can ask us with more questions if you would like if you're interested on this yeah um what are the financial assistance that we provide that the faculty and the center provide okay we have teaching assistance scheme and also international student fee schemes and also ums grad with ten thousand. okay uh, for more details on this you can come and see me or contact me on i think it has been um explained by the center also but okay you can come and see me on how this uh, scheme uh works and what is the um requirement for these schemes yeah okay for full-time student also you can uh you are eligible to do to for assistance for seminar and conference so you can go and present your paper for free okay Semester one and two and semester three and four for masters and for PhD is semester one and two. Okay. 
Okay, one of the requirements that you need to fulfill in order to get your degree is to make sh making sure on your publication requirement. Okay, for master degree, you have to have at least one journal index article, my side. Okay, and also one proceeding in seminars and colloquium and confer conference. You need to fulfill this in order for you for, for the purpose of convocation. Yeah. And for PhD, you need to have at least two general index article in my site, corpus or era, and one proceeding in seminar or colloquium. You might be wondering at this time, Doctor, what is my site? What is corpus? What is ISI? Okay, we will be having a session um, in the new future on um, determining what is journal articles. Okay, and um, what is the um, what is non journal uh, non index or index journal? We will have this session. Um, we will call upon um, speakers to help you to to understand more on the subject. Yeah. Okay, this is for your proposal defense. Um, it's easier nowadays. Any forms and any um, application you can go to. We have a link, so you can just you don't need to do it. Uh, apa um, hard copy. We can assist you with uh, the we provide you with the link and you can uh, submit your application you don't need to come to the office you know and uh, this is submission this is by the end of your studies you need to have uh, notice of this submission should be submitted after the pre viva result is released okay usually it takes three months and um notice is valid for six months okay uh once you the semester fee exemption is given only after the final draft of thesis is submitted of CPS. So as, as long as you have not um, submit your thesis, you still need to continue for your fees. Yeah. Um, for oral examination or viva voce, it will be conducted within two to four months. Okay. Every um every process procedures. Okay. They have um uh time for it. Okay, they have a um, duration, you know, they have a, so you need to know when is the deadline, you know, so you will not overlook the matter. These are the tuition fees, okay, for social science, uh, local and international differs. Okay, and if you have more questions or you are not sure, you can always ask us or you can also look at the Kaeda Pengajian Pasca Siswaza, okay. And... Uh, it is a uh, student can uh, just a gentle reminder that the student candidature may be discontinued if a full time student fail to present the research proposal within three semesters without any progress. Yeah, um, uh, and for the part time students, four semesters, um, and you need to as a student, you need to present the studies progress report at least once within a two year semester. But it's advisable every semester that you need to do it. Yeah. This is the uh, academic calendar for, 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 so that you don't miss any important um, dates. And this is the, you can also view the UMS Center for Postgraduate Studies website for more information on um, current students, on what type of uh, scholarship that we offer, uh, the center offer, things like that. So for information, we have uh, February intake and September intake. And I think you are aware of the application process as well on how to, uh, how to apply because you're already here again. And yep, uh, the light of the end of the thesis, uh, can you see it already? Because um, today's your first day. Okay, maybe it's still vague or you can't see it clearly yet. But I do believe as you go along, the light will be brighter. And I do also believe that the best view comes after the hardest climb. We are here to assist you. Please do not um, feel intimidated, okay? Um, not only us, the lecturers here, the faculty with, with uh, not only from, not only your supervisors, all the lecturers will be able to assist you if you need to maybe just um, networking or um, exchange ideas, things like that. With that, um, thank you very much. We open the session for Q and A. If you have any, Mr. Arif, are you there? Okay, let's see. Stretch break. Okay, good morning. My name is Dr. Izanti. Class will be face to face or online. Good morning, Mr. Amir. Class will be conducted online.
Yes, online and all classes will be recorded. So if you miss the class, let's say you have to go to work or you have things to do, um, you can watch the recorded version. Okay. Hi, Flaviana. What? Wow, you shouldn't be joking. Hi, Flaviana. There are a lot of lecturers here also that can assist you. Dr. Awang Kaifa, Dr. Borhan, Dr. Chan, okay, Mr. Jainurin, Wan Dayang, Dr. Ni. What is the platform used for online class? We will be using Webex, Joanna. We will be using uh, Webex platform. Yeah, Webex. Uh, uh, yeah, Webex. Okay, and all the information will be uh, emailed to your uh, UMS email address, to the UMS email, your email address, your UMS email address. Yeah, that's why you need to update on your phone number and also your U UMS email. And we will also post it in Telegram. There's no reason for you not to know because uh, we will uh, post this information. Yeah. Any more questions? You can also ask... Uh, Okay. Any? Uh, can you? Uh, the new student. Uh, the new. Uh, postgraduate student. Can you raise your hand? Amir. Amir. Amir is new. Amir. June. Hi, Karunis. Karunisa. You are doing your PhD now. Congratulations, Karun. How are you? Good doctor. Good doctor. Thank you. <laughs> Doctor James, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And Liu Li Ling. Hold on, Liu. Let me recall. <laughs> Who is your supervisor? Liu. Dr. Caroline. Dr. Caroline. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Time to join the February intake. Yes. Okay. So you can join the course for the research methodology course. Yeah. Sure. No problem. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Any more question? Good morning, Doctor. How do I change my mode to full time? From part time, full time. To, okay. We can. Uh, we you need to uh fill up the form. Okay, and we will process it for you on behalf of you. Still online for yes. The sorry to get oh, yeah. The study mode is still online for February intake. So sad. We'll not be able to see you face to face. Yeah, it's still online. Um, what else? Any more question? Juliana Natasha. Juliana any student. Dr. Azizi, am I correct, Juliana? Yes, yes, correct, doctor. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, doctor. Okay, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, doctor. I hope that I'll be seeing you soon. Yeah, definitely will. <laughs> okay, any more questions? For, for methodology class, it will be conducted online, yeah, online. If there's any changes, we will um, inform you, okay? Joanna, yeah, so sad. Yes, I thought the physical, physical face to face for the research methodology class. It is still done, uh, uh, virtual. Yeah, Joanna. So sad, Joanna. I cannot see you. Okay. Any more question for Doctor Arif? Perhaps Doctor Arif, where are you, Doctor? I'm still here. Okay, good. You're still here. The students might be uh want to talk to you, perhaps. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. At least we can see your face. You are such an important person. Oh. Okay, who else? Dr. Deborah is also here. Thank you for joining us. Dr. Rahimi is also here. If there's there's any more question for Dr. Arif, perhaps? The Faradila. Faradila is a uh, second semester. Okay, if there's no, I pass over the session to Dr. Arif. Dr. Arif. Yeah. All right. I think uh, because we expect about uh, 20 to 30 students for post uh, by, by research. Unfortunately, uh, today we only have like uh, maybe less than 10. Right? Less than 10. So pretty sad also. Lah. Right. But anyway, uh, if uh, there is no more question from the student, right, uh, probably we can just uh, end this session here, Dr. Zianti. Right. Uh, thank you for for all the 
to all our lecturers who join this uh, session. All right, always uh, be supportive and always uh, yeah. uh, be here lah whenever uh, we have an uh, event like this. All right. Okay, I think I think that's all from me. I, I pass to you. Uh, or you want to take a photo? One yeah. More time? Okay. Yeah, take a photo. All right. Okay. Well, maybe uh, everybody can uh, switch on their camera. Yes. All right. Uh, especially craft from Dr. Ijanti. All right. For us to take another uh, uh, photo. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hey, Dr. Rosalie. Hello. Sorry. Hi, Dr. Sudin. Okay. We will wait for uh, Madam Ellie to take the photo. Okay, Doctor. Okay. Okay, right. I can smile. One, two, smile. One, two, smile. Okay, freestyle. Okay, one, two, smile. Okay, thank you. Right. Thank you. So, I'll, thank I'll you. Hope that, yeah, I hope that you have an enjoyable journey with us. Okay, please come and see us if you have any uh, question and answers. Okay. Okay, I'll see you in the next session. Take care, everyone. Assalamualaikum and uh, good morning everyone. Thank you very much for joining the briefing session for coursework student for uh, intake semester two, session 2021-2022 coursework program. Uh, so basically in this uh, briefing session, I will uh, explain to you the what we call as basic informations that are related to the coursework programs that we have uh, in in the faculty and uh, before that i would like to uh, on behalf of the faculty i would like to uh, express our sincere gratitude to all of you for choosing ums to pursue your uh, postgraduate studies Okay, so a little bit of info about the uh, program coordinators. Uh, I am Saizal Pinjaman, the postgraduate coordinator uh, for coursework programs in the faculty. So if you have any questions, you may uh, contact me through email or you can also WhatsApp me. Yeah. So apart from that, you also need to know that uh, we also have specific coordinators for each of the coursework programs. So for the MHCM, we have Dr. Oscar Dawson, while for MBA, we have Dr. Siti Norbaya Ahmad, while for MECONS, we have Dr. Cheong Jia Chi. So if you have any questions, you can either contact me uh, or you can also contact the respective coordinators. Okay, so to explain about the information about the what we call as programs that we have, postgraduate programs that we have in the faculty, I will first explain about the coursework programs that we have. So basically in the faculty, uh, we have uh, two coursework programs namely the Master of Business Administration, or shortly known or called as MBA. And apart from that, we also have the Master of Human Capital Management, or MHCM. So basically, the program learning objectives of these two programs are as you can see on the slide. So the aims of the programs are to produce professionals who are able to apply knowledge and technology of business administration and human resource management. Second, to, to produce professionals who are responsible in enhancing excellent quality of working environment and uh, to become confident and have relevant knowledge from diverse perspective. And last but not least, to produce professionals with balanced knowledge, charismatic ethical values and integrity. So when we offer the courses, we uh, ensure that the courses will help our postgraduate students to be able to meet 
these four program learning uh, objectives. And in terms of the program duration, as you can see there, for both MBA and MSTM in full-time mode, we expect students to be able to complete between one to three years. While for part-time student, we expect student to be able to complete between two to four years. And in order for you to be conferred with the master's degree, you need to complete three important requirements, fundamental requirement. First is to complete the 40 credit hours. Second, to obtain at least a CGPA 3.0. And last but not least, you need to pass all courses. So these are the three important uh, requirements that you need to be able to meet or to complete in order for you to be conferred with the master's degree. And uh, in terms of the registration, I believe that the postgraduate center as well as Bloom have already explained to you in details about the registration process and everything. But uh, briefly speaking, in terms of the registration, for full-time student, you may register between 12 to 20 credit hours per semester. But basically, all of you here who enroll in semester two are part-time students. So for part-time students, you are allowed to take between 6 to 12 credit hours per semester. So if, say, for example, we have three credit hours per uh, courses, yeah? So it means that for a part-time student, you may take between two to four courses per semester. This is for part-time student. While for a full-time student, they are allowed to uh, register between uh, four to six courses in a semester. And in terms of the registration, you also need to be aware that registration below or more than the minimum or maximum credit amount is subjected to special condition set by the faculty. And in terms of the fees payment, so uh, the fees as well as the registration of the courses need to be completed within two weeks from the date of registration. But if you have anything to ask related to uh, the financial matters, you may ask Plums directly, yeah? And in terms of adding and dropping any courses, students are allowed to add or drop any courses between week two to week four. Remember that if you drop a course, then the fee that you have completed for the course will be uh, what we call as carry forward to the following semesters. Yeah, while students who intend to withdraw from any courses registered, you are allowed to do so. You may apply to do so between week five to week eight in the respective semester. So if you have withdrawn a course, the fee will not be carried forward. Yeah, it will not be reimbursed. And in terms of the changes of the mode of registration, keep that in mind that the change of the mode of registration depends on the remaining maximum period of candidature for the mode of registration applied. But this is only applicable for the local student because all international students are required to uh, to become a full-time uh, mode student, yeah? Okay, what you see on the screen is the program structure for uh, semester two, session 2021-2022 intake. And uh, as you all can see, in, in this semester, which is semester two, session 2021-2022, student will take three courses, namely the production and operation management, human resource management, and one elective course. So in the faculty, 
you have three elective course areas for MBA, namely the international business, entrepreneurship, and organization. So if, say, for example, you take the international business area, it means that in, in this semester, you will take the international business. And uh, respectively, if you are planning to take the entrepreneurship area, then in that case, you need to take the corporate entrepreneurship. While for those who wanted to take the in organizational management area, you will take the organizational leadership and ethic in this semester, semester two, session 21, session 2021, 2022. And uh, each of these courses will carry three credit hours. So in semester three, student will take the second elective course. And uh, you need to be aware that if you take the international business area, it means that you need to take both elective courses in these specific areas. You cannot mix two electives from different elective areas. Means that if you take the international business in semester two, so in semester three, you will need to complete the second elective course for international business area, which is the international marketing. Same goes if a student take the corporate entrepreneurship in semester two. So in semester three, the student need to complete the entrepreneurship project management. And this is also the same for the organizational management. If a student take the organizational leadership and ethics in semester two, that student need to complete the second elective for organizational manage management, which is the intercultural management in semester three, session 2021, uh, 2022. So basically in the, our faculty, we have two types of semester long semester and short semester. So semester one and semester two are long semester, while semester three is a short semester. So the difference between long semester and short semester is the time period for lectures, where for long semester, the time period for lecturing is 14 weeks and half of that for short semester where student will, uh, what we call as join the lecture for seven weeks in a short semester, which is semester three. And okay, moving to the semester one, session 2022-2023, as you all can see, student will complete three courses, namely the management and organizational behavior, managerial accounting and finance and managerial economics. And each of these course will carry three credit hours. So in total, student need to complete nine credit hours in semester one, session 2022-2023. In the following semester, which is semester two, session 2022-2023, student will then take two courses namely corporate strategy which carries three credit hours and research methodology and business research project which carries seven credit hours and in this semester semester two student will be in the proposal stage of the business research project where student need to present their project in a proposal presentation session and the research methodology and business research project will then be completed in semester three in the completion stage where students are required to present their completed research project in a viva voce and to submit the hardbound copy of the said project in this particular semester. And in the last semester, which is semester one, session 2023-2023, uh, 
2024, student will complete the last three core courses, namely the advanced statistics, marketing management, and uh, entrepreneurship. Okay, so each of these core courses will carry three credit hours. So in total, there are nine credit hours that the student need to complete in this final semester, semester one, session 2023-2024. So in total, there are 40 credits that credit hours that each of you need to complete for an MBA. And uh, another important information that are related to uh, what we call as the program structure that we have over here is if say, for example, you intend to change your mode of registration from part time to full time. Of course, this is only applicable for local student. And I believe that all of you here are local student because uh, the intake for semester two is only for part time student. So if you wanted to change your mode of registration from part time to full time, you are allowed to do so. But make sure to change your mode of registration starting from semester one, session 2022-2023 over here, as you can see. Yeah, because the reason why you need to change your mode of registration starting from semester semester one, session 22-2023 is because if you're planning to change your mode of registration because you wanted to shorten the time period for you to complete your study in semester one you will then take the three additional courses which are the advanced statistics marketing management and entrepreneurship which you're supposed to take in the final semester if you are a part-time student so by completing six courses of course you have to change your mode of registration before that it means that you have shortened your uh, period of candidature by one semester. Yeah, but subject to uh, it's subject to the what we call as approval from the faculty, of course, because in order for you to change your mode of registration, you need to submit your application to the faculty for the faculty to review. OK. So, yeah, if on the other hand, you change your mode of registration after the semester one, say, for example, in semester two, in that case, even though you are a full time student, you still have to take these three courses in the last semester because they will not be offered in semester. These courses, they will only be offered in the respect in their respective semesters. For example, the advanced statistics, marketing management and entrepreneurship will only be offered in semester one. Same goes to the management and organizational behavior, managerial accounting and, and finance, as well as the managerial economics. While in semester two, courses that are offered will be production and operation management, human resource, uh, resource management, the elective one, as well as the corporate strategy and the research methodology and business research project in semester three courses that are offered will be the elective as well as the completion stage of the research method and business research project okay all right move to the next slide what we have over here what we have over here is the program structure for mhcm part-time mode for this is of course for the semester two session 2021-2022 intake. So as you all can see, in semester two, student will take three courses, where two of the courses will be core courses, while the third course is an elective. And uh, the core courses that are offered in semester two are the technology application in human capital management as well as the compensation strategy and each of these core courses 
will carry two credit hours, while the elective will only carry through two credit hours. And in this semester, the elective that is offered is the conflict management. So this is the elective that you will take in this particular semester. So in semester three, session 2021-2022, student will take the second elective course. Yeah, student will take the second elective course. And it depends on the course offered by the faculty. Yeah, and the course offered by the faculty is based on it base is based on the nomination made by our postgraduate students. Okay, in semester one, session 2022-2023, student will complete three core courses, namely human capital management, management and organizational behavior, as well as human resource information system. Uh, so in total, there are nine credit, hour, credit hours to be completed in semester one. In semester two, 2022-2023, student will take the performance management, strategic human capital management, and research methodology and research project. And uh, this is in the proposal stage. So two, these two core courses will carry three credit hours each, while the research methodology and business research project will carry six credit hours, okay? And the research project will be entering its completion stage in semester three, session 2022-2023. So this is the completion stage of the research project. So just like the MBA, in the proposal stage, which is which is in semester two, students are required to complete the proposal of their research project and to present it in a proposal presentation. While in the completion stage, which is in semester three, session 2022-2023, students are required to complete their research project to present their research project in a viva voce and to submit the hardbound copy of their project. But the difference between MBA and MHCM research project is that for MHCM, the amount of credit hours allocated for the research project is six rather than seven credit hours as in MBA. So in the final semester, which is in semester one, session 2023-2024, student will complete three, are required to complete three core courses, namely the human capital planning and development, psychology and counseling in organization, and laws and practices in human capital management. And each of these core courses will carry three credit hours. So in total, there are 40 credit hours that a student needs to complete in MHCM. And just like in an MBA, if you plan to switch your mode of registration or to change your mode of registration to a full time in order to shorten the time period of your candidature, we advise you to change your registration or mode of registration starting from semester one, session 2022-2023, so that you can take the additional three courses, that, so that you can take the three additional four courses, the human capital planning and development, psychology and counseling and organization, and laws and practices in human capital management, which you're supposed to take in the final semester if you a part-time student yeah so the reason why i explain this is because uh, i frequently receive uh, inquiry from part-time students in terms of uh, you know changing the mode of registration because they are planning to change sorry because they are planning to shorten the time period of their study 
just like what we can, you know, to change their model, yeah, to shorten their time period of candidature by uh, a semester, for example. All right. Okay. Move to the Master of Economics or MEcons. So MEcons is a mixed mode program. So the difference between coursework and mixed mode is that for a coursework like MBA and MHCM, the element of uh, what we call as, yeah, the, the element of research is a lot less compared to MEcons where if we looked into the amount of credit hours for dissertation, which is the research element for MECONS, it comprised 50% of the uh, total credit hours for this particular program. So that is why we consider these MECONS as a mixed mode yeah, rather than a coursework. All right, so the aims of MECONS can be divided into three. First is to provide advanced education in the field of economics. Second is to prepare skilled workers with economics knowledge. And third is to provide continuous education for lifelong professional growth. And in terms of the program duration, MECON student is expected to complete a full-time MECON student is expected to complete between three to six semesters while a part-time student is expected to complete between five to 10 uh, semesters. So in the MECONS, there is no short semester. They are all long semester. So basically, if we convert, if we convert this into, an, uh, into yearly basis, three semesters is equal to one and a half year, yeah? So, while for a part time, five to 10 semester basically means that uh, between two and a half to five years, basically. Yeah. So, in terms of the conferment of the degree, MECON students are required to complete these three important uh, requirements. First is to complete the 40 credit hours and to obtain at least a CGPA. 3.0 and pass all courses and the dissertation. So uh, I think that I don't have to explain about this registration except for the amount of credit hours that are allowed to be taken by the MECON student. So for a full-time student, they are, they are allowed to take between 12 to 21 credit hours, while for a part-time student, you are allowed to take six credit hours. So if we have three credit hours, or if a course carries three credit hours, you are allowed to take two courses in a semester for a part-time student. So the rest of the information is just the same as before. So I don't think that I have to explain it again. Okay, in terms of the program structure, as you can see here, just like I said before this, there is no short semester for MECON student. So all semesters will be long semester. So in terms of the time period of what we call as lectures, in the long semester, student will join a 14 weeks of lecture, basically. All right. So in terms of the semester, in terms of the course offered for each semester, in this semester, semester two, 2021-2022, student, MECON student will take two courses, International Financial Economics and Applied Human Resource Economics. This International Financial Economics is a co-course, while the Applied Human Resource Economics is an elective course. And each of these courses will carry three credit hours. So in total, we have six courses. Sorry, three, six credit hours in this semester. In semester one, session 2022-2023, student will take two core courses, namely the advanced microeconomics and advanced macroeconomic. And each of these courses will carry three credit hours, just like in semester two in, pre in its previous semester. 
So in semester two, session 2022-2023, student will take the research method, which carries three credit hours, and the dissertation, which carries 19 credit hours. And uh, in semester two, student will be in the proposal, we will enter the proposal stage of the dissertation, where in this particular semester, they are required to complete their dissertation proposal and to present it in a proposal presentation. Yeah, and uh, the dissertation will be in its final stage in semester one, okay, in semester one, session 2023-2024. Yeah, so this dissertation is carried from the previous semester, where in semester one, session 2023-2024, students are required to complete their dissertation and to present it in a viva voce. And then after that, they need to submit. Yeah, they need to submit the hardbound copy of their dissertation. So I believe that there is a typing error here. There is a mistake in this, what we call as program structure, because after semester one, 2023, 2024, we have another semester, which is the final semester, semester two, 2023, 2024, uh, 2024, where you are required, yeah, you are required to complete two additional courses. Okay, you are required to complete the two additional courses, as you can see on the screen. So these courses are the econometrics theory in application, as well as project planning and uh, appraisal. Sorry, allow me to uh, what we call as a make a correction here because uh, I believe that this program structure is in fact uh, correct. Yeah. So rather than okay, uh, rather than having the econometrics theory in application as well as the project planning and appraisal in semester two session 2023-2024. These two courses indeed will be taken in the same semester as the dissertation in its final stage. Yeah, it means that in this particular semester, students required to take two core courses and the dissertation. Yeah, the econometrics, theory and application, project planning and appraisal, as well as the dissertation in its final stage in this particular semester semester one session 2023 2024 yeah. sorry for the mistakes so of course as you all can see in terms of the amount of credit hours in total MECON students are required to complete 40 credit hours just like mba and mhcm students okay see so we move into the course assessment so basically there are various type of coursework for uh, MBA, MHCM, and MECON, and it depends on the lecturer. But in general, there are, uh, yeah, as I said before this, there are various type of assessment, namely class participation, case studies, term paper, midterm mid exam, as well as quizzes. And it depends on the lecturer on which type of assessment that they will conduct for their respective courses. And uh, apart from that, we also have the final exam. And uh, the final exam will carry 40% of the overall uh, marking or the overall percent of the grade, while coursework carries 60% of the total uh, grade. So, but of course it depends on the lecturer because for this semester, we still allow lecturer to have 100% coursework rather than having the final exam. But of course, this is subject 
to the decision that will be made by the top management, okay? And of course, in terms of the cost assessment, this is not applicable to research methodology and business research project for MBA, research methodology and research project for MHCM, and the dissertation for the ME cons. In terms of grading, of course, we have various layer or level of grading. A is equivalent to 4.0 in CGPA, and uh, it is between, in terms of the percentage, it is between 80 to 100 percent. And A minus is equal to 3.67 in terms of uh, what we call as CGP, and it, it is between 75 to 70, 71, 79. B plus is equal to 3.33, and in terms of the percentage, it is between 70 to 74. B is equal to 3 in terms of grading, and it is between 65 to 69. B minus is equal to 2.67, and it is between 60 to 64, and C plus is equal to 2.33, and it is between 55 to 51, as 59. Keep in mind that the minimum grade for passing is C plus, and any percentage or any marks that is lower than 55 will be graded F, which is equal to zero. Yeah. And uh, of course, student is allowed to register for repeating the course if number one, student fail in any course taken. Of course, yeah, if you if a student fail a course, for example, the student need to repeat yeah, the, the course in order to pass. And uh, or B to obtain a grade of B minus or C plus for uh, the course. And this is only allowed once throughout the candidature. So if a student is dissatisfied with uh, his or her grade, uh, so he or she is allowed to repeat the course, but this is only applicable or this is only allowed once throughout the candidature. This is if a student obtain a B minus or a C plus. But of course, as I said before this, if a student fail a subject or a course, then that student need to repeat it. And uh, here, what we have here is the candidature status, and we have various status of candidature. First is pass, and this is when a student obtain a CGPA of 3.0 and above, and uh, a student will be given a conditional pass if the student obtained a CGPA between 2.33 until 2.99. If a student obtained below 3.0, minimum 2.33, maximum 2.99, then that student will be given a conditional pass for his or her status of candidature. And the student will be given the status of fail and terminated, yeah, status of fail and terminated if the student obtain a CGPA of less than 2.33, okay? And if a student obtain the conditional pass for two consecutive semester, the student will also be given the status of fail and terminated. And if that student is given this status, he or she need to appeal to the faculty within two weeks after the announcement is uh, uh, given. And uh, of course, apart from that, we also have various other statuses, including the deferment, suspension, withdrawal, and uh, terminated due to misconduct. So this status is, uh, I believe that it is very important for all of you to know, yeah, and you all need to be aware of this. All right, so in terms of the academic calendar, what we have over here, you can also retrieve this information from the Plumes website, okay? So in terms of the course registration, so the course registration uh, is between uh, 21st, 
of February until 6th of uh, March, and it is for a period of two weeks. And uh, in terms of the late registration, in terms of the late registration, it is between 7th of March until 20th of March 2022 for a period of two weeks as well. And in terms of the in terms of the deferment of study, but of course this is only relevant for current student. Yeah, it is between 21st of February until 6th of March 2022. And uh, yeah, student will be suspended if they fail to register. Uh, if they yeah, if they fail to register starting from 21st of March 2022. All right. In terms of the uh, what we call as classes. So the class will commence on the 28th of February 2022 until 12th of June 2022 for 14 weeks. Of course, this is a long semester. And adding or dropping a course is allowed to be applied between week two to week four. And it is between 28th of February until 20th of March 2022 for three weeks. Okay, so any student who intend to drop or add a course are allowed to do so in this time period. Yeah, between 28th of February until 20th of 28th of February until 20th of March 2022. It is between week two until week four. And withdrawal from courses is allowed to be applied. Students are allowed to apply for a course withdrawal between week five to week eight. And it is between 28th of March until 24th of April 2021 for a period of four weeks. As I said before this, as I said before this, if uh, a student is withdrawing a course, then the fee, the registration fee for that course will not be reimbursed. Uh, while a student who drop a course, registered course, uh, in terms of the fees that have been paid for that registered course, uh, that fees will be carried forward for the next semester, okay, for the following semesters. And uh, of course, in terms of the final examination, it will be conducted within uh, uh, 20th of uh, June until 3rd of July 2022 for 14 days or roughly two weeks. And semester break will be between 4th of July until 4th of September 2022 for nine weeks. Okay, what we have over here is the timetable for our MBA student. And uh, as you all can see, on Monday, we have human resource management that will be handled by Dr. Jakaria Dasan. So in terms of the timing of the lecture, it will be conducted in the evening from 7 to 10 p.m. And for this semester, we are conducting the course online until further changes uh, that will be announced to, to the student, yeah, to, to all of you. And in Tuesday evening, we have the production and operation management that will be handled by Dr. Sida and Mr. Chai Nurin. On Wednesday, we have the research methodology and business research project that will be handled by Dr. Lim Tian Sang and Dr. Siti Norubaya Ahmad. Of course, these courses, okay, these courses, not all of these courses will uh, uh, will be taken by part-time students, yeah? So, uh, because in terms of the lecture, both part-time and full-time student will join the same what we call as courses for the courses that they are 
taking as well. Okay, but of course, for MBA student part time, you will only take the three courses as we have explained before this. And uh, if I can show it to you again, so the courses will be production and operation management, human resource management, and one elective course. It means that, okay, it means that uh, your lecture will be on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Of course, uh, in terms of the what we call as uh, lecturer, international business, which is uh, a part of international business area elected course, will be handled by Dr. Jaratin Lili. For corporate entrepreneurship, which is a type of entrepreneurship area or which is in an entrepreneurship area uh, elected course, it will be uh, handled by Associate Professor Dr. Ramraini Ali Hassan while organizational leadership and ethics, which is in the organizational management elected area, will be handled by Associate Professor Dr. Awangku Hassanal Bahar Pangiran Bagul. So uh, you need to choose or to select one of these elective courses. And as I said before this, if you have completed the first elective course for a particular uh, area, say, for example, you have completed the international business in this semester. So in semester three, you will take the second uh, elective course for the international business area, which is the international marketing. And the the, the second corporate as the second entrepreneurship uh, area elective course is, as you can see from the uh, program structure that we have explained before. Yeah, same goes to the national leadership and ethics. Yeah, you need to take the second elective course for that areas. You cannot simply mix two elective course from different uh, elective areas. So, yeah. Your class will be on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. For the MHCM student, on Monday, okay, on Monday, you will take the compensation strategy that will be handled by Dr. To Pei Sung, alias Sharon, in Tuesday, sorry, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in Tuesday, the performance management, you are not going to take it. Same goes to the strategic human capital management because the next lecture will be the technology application in human capital management because this is a uh, course, uh, what we call as uh, that you can take in this particular semester. So. Technology application in human capital management will be handled by Mr. Datu Razali, uh, Datu Iranza. And the third course that we will take this semester, if you are following the program structure that we have instructed, that we have created, is the conflict, conflict management, which is an elective course that will be handled by Dr. Sharifa Rahama Amirul. Of course, in terms of timing, Core courses will be conducted be, uh, between 7 p.m. will be conducted starting from 7 until 10 p.m. in terms of lecture, while the lecture for conflict management, which is an elective, will be from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. because it only carries two credit hours and it will be on Friday. For the MECON student, on the other hand, in this semester, in uh, this semester, you will take the international financial economics as well as the applied human resource economics. And the international financial economics will be on Monday, and it will be handled by Associate Professor Dr. Wong Hock Sen, while the applied human resource economic, which is an elective, uh, will be on Wednesday evening from 7 to 10 p.m. And it will be handled by uh, Professor Datuk Dr. Kasim Mansur and Dr. Beatrice Lim Fui Yi. Okay, uh, another important information is about the online learning. 
So in UMS, basically, the uh, materials are shared through a platform called Smart V3 or Smart Version 3. So this is an online platform used by UMS in order for the lecturer to share the uh, what we call as teaching materials, the lectures, the assignment to the student. So I encourage you to look into this portal because this is a very important port portal that you need to access so that you can get the course materials that are offered or shared by each of the lecturers. And if you have any question regarding this learning management system, the Smart UMS, you may uh, email, okay? You may email the, uh, the admin of the portal through this email address, or you can also contact them directly through this, uh, what we call as uh, telephone number and ex extension. So uh, I believe that's all from me. And uh, yeah, if you have not joined the Telegram group, kindly do so because uh, we have a specific Telegram group for postgraduate by coursework. So any information, will be shared through that uh, talent group as well. And it is faster for you to receive the information if you are in the group. So I highly encourage you to, to join the group. And in order to join it, in order to join the Telegram group, you can either follow that link or you can also scan that QR code yeah, to, to join the group. It is very important for you to join it. And I highly recommend you to join because uh this is so that you don't miss any important information okay so do we have any question before we end the session uh do we have any question from the floor you may switch on your microphone to ask or you can also uh put your question in the meeting chat okay any questions so far anyone okay. Good morning, Doctor. I'm Chia. Yes, good morning, Chia. Yeah, yes, Doctor, I want to ask, right, uh, regarding on the semester three, can we understand it? it's on the semester break? If let's say we are the MBA students uh, for part time. Yes, yes. Uh, when is the semester three uh, that we need to register? Is it during the semester break of the uh, starting from the July until uh, September, that period? Yes. Oh. So usually the short semester will be during the semester break. But of course, uh, they will, the, the academic calendar uh, will, will be uh, what we call as will be shared by plumes later on. So we can you can get the specific date for the short semester once we have it. Oh, I see. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. So any other question? So yeah, talking about the short semester or the semesters in general, basically in a year, we have two long semesters and uh, one short semester. So as I said before, long semester will have 14 weeks of lecture and roughly two weeks of final exam, while a short semester will have seven weeks of lecture and uh, roughly one week, if not less, final exam week or exam week. So of uh, uh, our uh, a full-time student who managed to complete and pass all the, what we call as courses offered in semester one, semester two, and semester three, will be able to complete their, what we call as program within one year, yeah? Of course, subject to the uh, uh, 
uh, requirement of the conferment of the master's degree. Yes, subject to that. Uh, meanwhile, for part-time student, since they are required to, uh, what we call as, they are required to take less number of uh, courses with long, with, with many semesters, it means that the time period for them to complete their study will be uh, longer than that, yeah. Basically, it will be, uh, yeah, it will be two years. Okay, we have another question from Shafila. Uh, so she said that, uh, Okay, so we have, yeah, we have uh, this question from Shafila. And uh, yeah, so if say, for example, uh, any one of you here, yeah, say, for example, any one of you here, she, so she is asking about the courses that are registered. So if any one of you here, who have made a mistake in terms of the course that you have registered for this uh, semester, you can still change your, what we call it, yeah, you can still uh, change that course to by following uh, the course that we have offered over here. Yeah, because you are still in the, uh, if I'm not, because the, even the lecture have not, uh, it's not started yet. It means that you still have time to to make a correction in terms of your the the course that you have registered. Okay, so you don't have to be worried about that. So all that you have to do is to contact Plums directly, or you can also email me so that I can forward the uh, your request to to them. Okay, Doctor Cesar, if I I can add now about the course register. Okay, so yeah, we have uh, uh, Encik Rahman over here to help you in terms of uh, registration also. Okay, uh, for those who are uh, wrongly at the subject and they want to change, but they cannot drop and add the subject because they already confirmed the registration. So you can um, just email me or you can uh, give your information in the chat box. Huh? Later, I will check. Because once student confirm the registration, they cannot add or drop their uh, course registration. Thank you very much, Mr. Rahman, for the response. So any other question from the floor? So, Regarding the registration, you may email uh, Mr. Rahman directly at rahman uh, rafael at ums.edu.my. So he have included his uh, email address in the meeting chat. So we have another question from the audience uh, regarding the class. So if a class is missed, are we able to retake the same class? So the good thing about online lecture is that the lectures are recorded, meaning that if you miss anything, you can simply refer back to the recording, yeah, to watch the recorded session. But of course, if you miss, I encourage you to inform your lecturer before saving, because I understand that many of you here or a majority of you here are working. So if you miss, any, uh, if you think that your work schedule is what we call as a, yeah, uh, is the same as your lecture time, then I encourage you to uh, inform your lecturer directly, yeah, so that they can address it. But uh, yeah, it is very important for you to inform anything to your lecturer so that, you know, maybe they can help you 
in terms of uh, sharing the materials and everything. So any other question? Any other question from the audience? So Mr. Rahman, do you have any other things to share with our students? Um, okay, so, so, um, so for the online class, we have the platform called Smart B3. I believe Dr. Sadal had mentioned that. So I will share later the video how to um, familiarize yourself with the Smart B3 lah in the maybe in the Telegram. Thank you very much, Mr. Rahman, for uh, for that explanation. Okay, so I believe that's all. Uh, yeah, that's all for this briefing session. And of course, if you have any other question, you can email me directly, or you can also post your question in the Telegram group if you are already there. Okay. And uh, yeah, again, thank you very much, everyone, for joining this uh, briefing session. I believe that's all for now and uh, stay safe, everyone. Oh, okay, okay. We have a request from uh, from the secretariat. Okay, so so the secretariat asked us to take a group photo. Okay, in that case, so I would like to invite all of you to switch on your camera. Yeah, to switch on your camera for the group photo session. Alamak, rambut belum sikat atau apa? <laughs> oh, tidak apalah, tidak apa. Boleh juga tu bawa buka. Nak pun ambil topi ke apa ke sana kan? So, the rest. Can you switch on your microphone? Maybe you need some time to ambil tudung, to prepare a little bit maybe. Okay, don't worry about that. We wait for we will wait for you first before we take a group photo. Again, thank you very much for choosing UMS. It's a place or institution for you to further your study. And uh, yeah, if you have anything to ask, you can also PM me directly through WhatsApp group, yeah, apart from the email that I have given before. So, the rest okay, and the English. Yes? Yeah, do you have any question? Ready to take a peek. Oh, okay, okay. So, I believe that the rest may not be able to switch on their camera, so it is okay. Maybe we can take a group photo, Lagan, before we yeah. end the session today. Okay, smile. All right. Okay, Thank smile. you very much for helping. Okay. Uh, smile, one, two. Okay, once more. One, two, smile. Okay, freestyle. One, two. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Okay, that's Thank all. You Thank all. you very much, everyone, for joining. Stay safe.